Uh, if, like me, you've been in electronics a long time, uh, you'll know that uh, that's very sore and I'm not going to do it. Uh, I've got an inductor here, a large inductor and a, and a six volt battery. And of course, when you connect a coil or inductor up to a battery, you can actually generate a very large back EMF, uh, producing quite a high voltage across here and it can really be quite painful. So I'm not going to do it. If you want to see that, you have to watch Electro Boom. Um, what I'm asking is a question here. Could it be heart stopping? So there's a lot of factors to that and I couldn't find anything on the internet. Uh, so, but first of all, I'd have to assume that the back EMF voltage is going to be high enough to deliver uh, a shock of something in the regions of 35 milliamps. Uh, and then we also have to consider how much energy would be in that shock. Uh, so, that, uh, so it would have to be roughly something greater than 50 joules. So if we have a sufficient number of turns and a large enough core where the energy is stored in the iron core, uh, then that does pose a possibility. We also have to be able to deliver a sufficient current to saturate the coil, core from the battery. Okay, so what I've got here is I've uh, picked uh, everybody's favourite dangerous transformer here and uh, I've up the ante with a, a 12 volt lead acid battery here and I've just connected a meter to the output of this so it's not a, a great way of doing it because basically the meter is in current so it's kind of shunting the output so we'll get the current but we wouldn't get the voltage really so it's maybe a bit of interesting to see what sort of current we can generate doing this. So almost 40 milliamps. So actually, this looks quite nasty uh, if that can give you a pulse of almost 40 milliamps. Now notice the scale goes off scale this way and now it's just the DC current and that's our back EMF that would be sore. Now the other thing is it's not an instantaneous pulse. Notice as the core uh, demagnetizes and relaxes, it, there is time taken. So that might be um, a saving factor that it's not delivering a, a real peak pulse. It's delivering it over a, a few seconds or a few seconds, depending on the size of the core. Okay, I'm outside with the uh, this largest transformer I've got. This is a uh, 50 kV and we have uh, a battery it's pretty depleted this one it's been kicking around and used a lot i'm going to just uh, basically magnetize the core with this and see what current i pull on the secondary when we break the circuit to see what sort of current so set it 10 milliamp scale just now and let's see what happens oh right okay that was uh, over 10 milliamps uh, Yeah, 10 milliamps we're getting out of this arrangement. Okay, I've got it connected up to the battery again. This time there's a large neon bulb in here. So I'm just going to... It's amazing how long that neon will run for with just the collapsing field in that coil. Now with a spark gap. You can certainly jump a good gap. Just to summarise, this is, uh, shows you the formula for inductance uh, and the energy. So the energy we reckon is going to be at least 50 joules to become a hazard. And if we look at the transformers we've been looking at, roughly 0.4 henrys uh, is the primary inductance. Uh, so we're looking at something like a 16 amp supply in order to to become a kind of hazardous situation. Uh, the, the battery used for the experiment here is pretty small and pretty old so it's unlikely to deliver 16 amps so certainly not for any length of time um, and also the, the larger the iron core the more uh, energy it will need to, to saturate or fully magnetize. But it certainly looks like you could have a, a situation where it's not advisable to, to try this, it would be hazardous.